This video covers how to create a SAP Cloud Application Programming Model project, how to configure your data model, how to expose that data model as a no data service, how to start your CAP application, and how to expose ports to be available in the internet. So let's get started. There are two different ways to create a CAP project. The first is to use the CDS CLI to create a project. There are different commands and the first one is already the sufficient one to create a project. So let's use that one and see what it needs. It needs a project name and further options such as is it a Java project? Do we need a HANA database? Do we need a MTA YAML file? Or um, do we eventually want to need uh, use a pipeline? So let's create that one and name our project CDS Bookshop. But before we will change into the right directory, which is Our projects folder and use the CDS CLI again to create a project. If we have a look at the file system there is a new folder with the project name and what we could do is to open that new folder in our workspace. So a workspace can combine different folders at different levels or in a hierarchy from uh, folders and to work on them in parallel. So we have in our project folder a new bookshop project. If we open that one, the Business Application Studio will refresh and will open the bookshop in our workspace. That's the first option to create a new project. What we could do as well is to create a project from a template. So let's go back one step and create one via a template. So there's a basic multi-target application or a cap project. Let's just go back and double check the target path. That's projects. Let's create it here in projects. and use the cap one and name it bookshop uh, template. And as you can see, there's the features we had also via the CDS CLI. If you want to have a HANA database added to the project, if it's a Java project, if you want to have an MTA YAML file, or if we need a pipeline configuration. We don't need anything of that um, right now. We'll later on cover that in other videos. All right, the project has been generated. What do you like to do? Let's just double check it via the terminal, what happened. And here we go. There is a new um, folder in our projects directory. And we can also add this one to my workspace. And as you can see, both directory structures are exactly the same. So let's get rid of the latter one. Um, so there is nothing more in here. Remove folder from workspace. Perfect. All right. So let's just have a look at the directory and what has been created using the CDS CLI. So we have different folders the SRV folder for the services, the DB folder for our entities or the data model, and the app for all the UI files. Additionally, we have a package JSON with some dependencies um, which the project needs, and as well as some scripts, how to start the project, for example, or later on how to test the project, etc. There is a dot file for CDS configurations, which is empty right now. 
but there is the possibility to either define CDS specific configurations either in the package JSON or in the CDSRC JSON. So since all of the folders are empty right now, let's just get started and add a data model to our project. Therefore, we go to the DB folder and create a new file, which is called schema.cds, which can contain multiple entities, but it can also define entities in different CDS files below the DB folder. I've just copied and pasted an entity which is called books with three different attributes with a key ID, with a title and with a stock. All of that is contained in a separate namespace, which is called my bookshop. That entity can now be also exposed via a OData service. Therefore, we will create a catalog service CDS file underneath the SRV directory. I'll also copy paste once again the service definition. It imports the entity from the DB folder, DB schema, and is defining a service, a so-called catalog service, which exposes an entity books, which is a projection of the defined books entity in my schema CDS. What you can already see is that the cap project explorer is able to show you what your project contains. So we have a data model with a namespace, my bookshop with an entity books. For example, if we click on the icon next to books, we can directly navigate to the corresponding entity as well as the services, which contains a books entity. If we click on the icon again, we can have a look where that entity is defined. Since we already have a entity in the service defined, let's just get started and start the project with npm start. npm start will have a look at the package JSON and we'll have a look at a script called start and execute the scripts for that. So implicitly npx cds run will be executed when we hit npm start. And since we are in the wrong folder, we need to go into the bookshop project and start it again. As you can see, npx cds run is run uh, is executed implicitly. And the application is now available at HTTP localhost 404 and the service document is available at the path catalog. We get a notification on the right hand side that a service is listening to port 404 or 4004. Click expose and open to access the service externally and preview it in a new tab. As you've learned in the previous video, the business application studio or your dev space as more or less a virtual machine running in SAP Cloud Platform. Therefore, all the stuff running in your dev space is not by default visible in the internet. So we will now go and map the port localhost 404 to a address which is available in the internet. We'll define a name for the exposed port, which is the bookshop. And then we'll be able to access the application from the internet, as you can see in the URL. What does it offer us? We have three different options. One is the service document. One is the metadata document. And one item is supposed to show the data of the actual entity. So let's have a look at the metadata and what you'll hopefully find is 
a entity container with an entity set books and an entity type catalog service dot books, which is referring to the entity type books with all the three attributes we have defined in the schema.cds. What you'll also find is the service document showing um, the name plus the URL. And if we try to access the books entity, you will not get any data, but you'll get a message in the business application studio saying that a database connection is missing. That's it about how to create a cap application, how to use it in the business application studio and how to access the service document, the metadata document, and how to hopefully access the data of an entity. In the next video, we will add a database connection and you'll then be able to query the data. Thanks for watching.